Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're going to talk about Star Wars because somebody has to talk about Star Wars because nobody cares. Nobody cares except for Scott Mendelson and a couple other bloggers who are looking for something to write about because there aren't any new movies and there won't be any new movies for a while. So let's dig up Star Wars. Let's dig up The Last Jedi. Let's bring up the rise of Skywalker because nobody else gives a shit. And we're going to talk about that in this video. Uh, we're also going to talk about, well, we're going to talk about how Fandango is buying Voodoo. Yeah, that's not a good thing. And this is why you should probably buy physical media because I don't know how long Voodoo is going to be around. I think I trust Walmart to be around longer than Fandango, but now they're going to own voodoo too so i don't know guys i don't know before we get into it please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants we're over 100,000 subs thank you so much for the support it's greatly appreciated and poor scott mendelson he doesn't have anything to write about he is the film reviewer for forbes and there are no movies no movies to write about so he's going to start writing about the last jedi and the Force Awakens and The Rise of Skywalker again, because why the hell not? He got a lot of hits on those back in the day, didn't he? Right? Because uh, just a couple months ago, everybody cared about Star Wars. And now nobody gives a shit. Uh, this is coming from Google Trends. I just want to put this out there. Look how few shits are given about The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. The movie came out and nobody cares. Nobody cares. Uh, nobody really even cares about Star Wars anymore. It's it's over. It's over. Star Wars is over. I think when The Mandalorian comes up, let's see if The Mandalorian's doing better. Yeah, even The Mandalorian. Even The Mandalorian uh, is the green. And there's a lot of interest and then it just dropped off a freaking cliff. Look at this. This is bad. So Scott Mendelson decides he's going to write about The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker and tell you plebs how The Last Jedi didn't undo Force Awakens, but Rise of Skywalker absolutely retconned Disney's Star Wars saga. Who gives a shit, Scott? Um, I'm just covering it. I'm covering, I'm covering this because this is where we're at with film reviewers who don't have new movies to review. We got to dig up Star Wars. Uh, there's a difference between offering unpopular answers to a previous film's questions and replacing the answers of a previous installment with your own in the next sequel. Somebody's angry that uh, their darling, that The Last Jedi, was basically retconned by The Rise of Skywalker. Now, I haven't seen The Rise of Skywalker yet. Geeky and I, neither one of us cared enough to watch it, even when it was at the Dollar Theater, even when I could get it on Vudu, and we're going to talk about Vudu, uh, dirt cheap. I have no desire to watch the movie. Maybe I'll catch it whenever it comes to Disney Plus or cable or whatever. Like Mark Hamill said, right? We'll catch it on cable, but I have no desire to watch this movie. So four months after its domestic theatrical debut, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker... Uh, will be our last blockbuster movie until uh, Tenet in July. Good luck with that. Uh, I will use this once a month Rise of Skywalker post, which I will continue until theater reopens or morale improves to complain about The Force Awakens editors Mary Jo Markey and Mary Ann Brandon, specifically Markey, arguing in a Mission Impossible podcast stating that The Last Jedi so conspicuously undid the storytelling of The Force Awakens. We've been having this conversation for two and a half years. Yeah, it's getting old there, Scott. It's one thing when critics, bloggers, pundits, random folks on social media and the like get into the debate, but when the folks actually working on the movies do, failing to understand what a retcon actually is, well, you're going to argue, Scott Mendelson, with two experienced women who worked on The Force Awakens. You're going to tell them they're wrong? Current year? I wouldn't go there. Dude, I would not go there. So he's basically saying that The Force Awakens ends on a cliffhanger and it ended with a glorified to be continued. Uh, he said, I would argue that much of the speculation and debate over Snoke's origins and Rey's parentage was not from the movie, but from bloggers and writers who spent the next two years offering what at best were educated guesses with J.J. Abrams not returning to helm The Last Jedi and Trevorrow already signed to direct Star Wars 9. We really had no idea what Abrams' answers to those questions might be, uh, but they should have. But they should have. Kathleen Kennedy should have had one piece of paper 
one piece of dirty ass coffee stained paper that had the basics of where this trilogy was going a four billion dollar acquisition and they don't know what the answers to all these questions they set up in the first movie were that's kind of a fail that's kind of a huge fail and i thought abrams and johnson were talking weren't they isn't that the official story they were talking if those threads really mattered at all in the grand story oh yeah they do it was possible snoke was just a political operator and ray's obsession with her parents was purely part of her belonging seeking belonging now it's 100 percent fair to not be happy with how things played out in the last jedi it's it is but we're going to write several articles telling you how wrong you are not just forbes but several other blogs and then we're going to call you names and then we're going to accuse you of being alt-right yahtzees uh, or bots, Russian bots, if you didn't like this movie. So it's really, it's we're saying it's okay to not like the movie, but really, we all know it's not okay not to like The Last Jedi, but feel free to hate away on The Rise of Skywalker. There's a big difference between I didn't like The Last Jedi's answers to the questions The Force Awakens posed and Last Jedi knowing, knowingly rewrote or retconned Force Awakens. Just because, no, Last Jedi retconned ruined pissed on shat upon vomited upon spat upon the legacy of george lucas's star wars and luke skywalker that's the problem i had granted the questions were answered in a very shitty fashion but i waited 30 plus years to see my hero luke skywalker return to the big screen only to find out he is a complete puss he's a complete waste of a human being by the time we see him again that's not what I wanted to see. Plus, we never got the original three leads back together again. You know what? Make it four. Let's throw Billy D. Williams in there. Let's have Han, Luke, Leia, and Lando all together on the Falcon. Just as Mark Hamill said, that would have been awesome. Fans would have loved it. Would have made bank. Would have shut people up. But now we couldn't have that. We couldn't have that. The Force Awakens no more gave us answers to questions than Tim Burton's Planet of, Plan of the Apes. No, don't worry. Don't worry. Disney's backpedaling. They're out there on Twitter trying to fill in all the plot holes of this god-awful abomination of a trilogy with tweets. So it's cool. They got this covered. You can't blame Ryan Johnson. You can't blame Ryan Johnson. He did the same thing in The Force Awakens. He left him. He left us in a really, really bad place. He left Luke on island, put Finn in a coma, turned Poe from dies in the first act cameo to major supporting character, and said, "Okay, it's your your ball now. Go play." That's the problem. There was no plan. It was generous of him, since the Last Jedi had more freedom to use that first film. However, it chose no. It walked back a lot of things. So the rise of Skywalker opened with Rey again being unsure of her force abilities and lacking confidence, Finn pining over Rey and caring more about her than the cause, but that was actually from the first film. And Poe regressing to a conventional hotshot flyboy, Sans earned maturity from his failed leadership in The Last Jedi. He only failed as a leader because we had to bring Holdo into the situation just to lecture him. Just like how we had to bring Rose Tico in to make sure Finn knew his place. That's the problem. Bringing the Emperor back... Okay, this I will agree with. Bringing the Emperor back to life negated Anakin Skywalker's final sacrifice in Return of the Jedi while retroactively making uh, she Ray Sheev's grandkid, which Luke and Leia apparently knew all along, uh, turns their previous interactions into a mess. They're, they're both shitty movies. And in fact, retroactively now, The Force Awakens is also a shitty movie. And I actually liked The Force Awakens. But it's ruined for me now. I'm not going to watch the movie again. Because I know how it ends. And it's a pile of steaming dog shit. I have no desire to ever sit through the Disney trilogy again. As far as I'm concerned, it's apocrypha. It's not george lucas's star wars they had george lucas's star wars and they tossed it over their shoulder just like luke skywalker tossed his old lightsaber over his shoulder and uh it was completely unnecessary this trilogy was nothing but a cash grab at the end of the day and you know what people don't give a shit about star wars bloggers are still writing about trying to to reignite the force trying to awaken the force awaken the debate because you know what a couple of months ago, bloggers loved to throw shade at people who didn't like The Last Jedi because they were probably getting tons of hits. They were getting tons of hits on their articles and they're doing really good. You know, that's what that's what this is about at the end of the day, but nobody gives a shit 
uh, interest in Star Wars has completely waned. Just to show you how far Star Wars has fallen in a couple of years, going back to 2015, which wasn't a terribly good year for comics, by the way, Star Wars number one, everybody was pumped about the Disney Star Wars trilogy. Star Wars number one sold almost a million copies. Now, disclaimer, see that little cross right there? 300 or 400,000 copies of that were sold in Loot Crate, but even if you take that away, we're still talking a half a million copies of a freaking Star Wars comic at Marvel. So the Disney trilogy comes and goes, and here we are, current year, and everybody brags about how the comic book industry before the shutdown was doing so much better. It's been the best it's been. The best it's been in a long time. Comics are great, comics are fine. Cool, let's see where Star Wars is. Look, they relaunched Star Wars, number one from Marvel. Doesn't even break 100,000 copies because nobody gives a shit. Now, that's still respectable. I'll give them that. In current year, that's actually, that's a pretty decent number. But then we go the following month. So here we got Darth Vader number one. We had to relaunch that too. That only pulled in 59,000 copies. Here we go down to Star Wars number three already is down to 40,000 copies. X-Force. Freaking X-Force, Avengers, Thor, Venom, Hulk, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy number two outsold Star Wars. Isn't this sad? I mean, this is really sad. This is freaking Star Wars and nobody cares except for bloggers trying to rekindle that, that conflict, I think, because they got to have something else to write about. So just going to throw this out there. I got this email today and people were like, is this going to be a video? I don't think it's a whole video, but I don't think it's good. Fandango is buying Voodoo off of Walmart. Now we've been buying all of our digital movies on Voodoo because my thought process was, well, it's owned by Walmart and Walmart's not going anywhere anytime soon. So it's probably safe to buy movies through Walmart. Oopsie doopsie, here comes Fandango. You know, Fandango, uh, Fandango that bought Rotten Tomatoes and Flickster, and I think they shut down Flickster, but they own Rotten Tomatoes. Fandango that's run by an ex Disney executive and with all kinds of shady shit in regards to uh, Star Wars movies and Captain Marvel. Uh, all kinds of craziness going on. Well, Fandango has got to be hurting because what's their business model? They sell tickets to movies and the theaters are shut down. So what do they do? Buy Voodoo off of Walmart. This doesn't make a lot of sense to me because if I were Walmart, I'd be like, this is money in the bank, yo. We got, we got Voodoo, but they're apparently buying it off of Walmart. Uh, apparently all of the titles will transfer. Now, this is about a year or two after Ultraviolet shut down too. So all these digital movies that you bought, now they're porting them over to Voodoo, but I do not like the idea of Fandango, a company which, you know, I don't know how long realistically they're gonna be around, but I don't like the idea of them owning my entire digital library. We probably got three or 400 movies on there. Um, so again, guys, this is, this is a cautionary tale. Make sure you have physical media. Buy physical media because they can't take it away from you. They can't edit it like they're doing with Disney Plus. Everybody's like, oh, we're opening the vault, but we're gonna edit the shit out of some of these movies. And we'll just keep editing them to be current year. Buy physical copies of your movies. This is the official statement. Uh, hi, Voodoo customers. We have some exciting news to share with you. Voodoo has entered into an agreement to be acquired by Fandango. That is the opposite of exciting. The ultimate digital network for all things movies and TV, except movies are not a thing right now. So they're desperate. They probably threw all kinds of money at Walmart to get Voodoo. While there will be many more exciting things to share in the months ahead, nothing about the Voodoo experience is changing. Your movie and TV library is safe. It was on ultraviolet too, wasn't it? And you will continue to have access to all your Voodoo apps across your favorite devices. We'll probably just make it a pain in the ass to log in. Voodoo will continue to deliver an amazing experience and we promise that the future will bring new features, offerings, and other benefits as we join the Fandango family. In the meantime, you can find more details here. Sincerely, Voodoo, we're out of here. Yeah, I think they shut Flickster down, didn't they? Yeah, this is this is it for Flickster. Like, what? what? They don't stream movies anymore. So how do I know that Fandango is not going to do the same thing to Voodoo and just buy the URL and not, not do anything with it? I don't know. 
uh, buy physical media, guys. You know, I think I'm, I, I I went for about two years without buying physical media, and between the Disney Plus censorship spree and Ultraviolet shutting down, and now Voodoo getting sold to the Rotten Tomatoes people, I'm I'm back on board with buying physical media. So screw this. Anyway, gonna wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And may the force be with you. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.